Okay, so let's try to answer this question of why don't we poll lots of people so that we really know what the population thinks. Um, if we poll a really lot of people, we can get that margin of error down to a, as close to zero as possible so that we know uh, really exactly what that the population is thinking at the time, right? So let's have a look at how the margin of error would change as we survey more people and how would the cost of the survey change as we survey more people. So please open up the Microsoft Excel file that I started out and if you have a different spreadsheet software you can use that too. And we're gonna, I've just made up some numbers here. Let's take sample size of 10 to 100,000 and we'll calculate different margins of error and then calculate the cost of the survey each time, right? So for a margin of error at 90% confidence We'll just click on that cell B2 and go equals S uh, equals sorry 82 over the square root of n sqrt parenthesis and then we can type in the number 10 if we like but it would be and, and press enter but it would be better it'd be better to type in the cell A2 right or click on A2. So equals 82 over SQRT parenthesis A2. Press enter. And we get a margin of error of 20, almost 26%. Now, the reason we did that is because we can actually hover over the bottom right of the cell, get the little black plus sign, left click on your mouse and drag your mouse down to the bottom and get the margin of error all the way down, right? So, um, so, uh, so in any case, if we look at this, as the sample size goes up, the margin of error goes down, right? Um, and and let's some more practice. Let's have a look at margin of error at ninety five percent confidence. So a sample size of ten. We'll click on cell C two. Go equals one hundred over sqrt parenthesis uh, a2 close parenthesis press enter right and um, we get 31.6 percent so a little bit bigger margin of error because we were looking for 95 percent confidence now right and so um, uh, so this again, what this is say, says is equals 100 over sqrt parenthesis a2 close parenthesis, right? And now I'll click on the cell C2, hover over the bottom right of the cell until I get the black plus sign, left click, hold down and drag down to the bottom and let go and then let go you see and then you've got the margin of error for all of these, right? Um, and so if I check the bottom for example that says equals 100 over square root of a6 and a6 is 100,000 and that's what I want. That's the margin of error at 95% confidence when the sample size is 100,000. So I guess the first thing to note right off the bat is um, well this is you know I mean how much better is a margin of error getting it from 1% to 0.3% I mean we had to survey nine like like to get from say a, a improve a margin of error 95 percent confidence from one percent to 0 0.3 percent we had to survey uh not just ten thousand people go from ten thousand people surveyed to a hundred thousand that's that's talking to ninety thousand more people on the telephone to get the margin of error from one percent down to 0 0.3 percent so i think uh you'll safely say uh, uh, you'll probably never ever see a a poll with a margin of error that's actually less than one percent right um, I mean that's just a lot of work that's a lot of time right uh, for just to pick something out um, it, it seems to make sense to go from a sample size of a hundred to a thousand though because here we can get the margin of error from ten percent down to three you know if you're reading a newspaper and it said the margin of error was ten percent you might say well pff, who knows you know that's just a total guess and so and, and it is hard to imagine how uh, even if you were careful with picking out your 
sample of 100 people and even if you try to make those 100 people really represent the population um, in income level, age, um, political affiliation, uh, uh, religious beliefs and all the, the things that you need, gender, who knows what, um, it, it's kind of hard to pick a hundred people that would represent the population, right? So so you might need a thousand people to represent the population if you're doing a national poll, at least, right? And so and 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 uh, and and so anyway, um, so looking at the cost that would be interesting. When I looked it up, it was about twenty-five dollars per person. PP means per person, right? So we're going to uh, for for ten people sampled, we're going to click on D two and go equals twenty-five times A two right press enter two hundred and fifty dollars right and the next one we can also do that we can go click on d3 go equals 25 star sorry that's a star key and then a3 a3 right right so that's one way of doing it or uh, even better you know start here again go equals uh, you know 25 star a2 just click on a2 press enter and you can just click on d2 hover over the bottom right until you get the black plus symbol click down on the left key and drag down all the way to the end and then you can get your um, costs for each sample and if you look at the bottom to sample a hundred thousand people at twenty five dollars a phone call that's two and a half million dollars you'd be paying to some survey company to do that survey um, you know and so this is why you don't see surveys of a hundred thousand people in size unless it's some type of an online survey where where it's voluntary and you're not paying people so there are online surveys that do that but then again online surveys are always biased aren't they because you know that's just the people that visited that website right so that's not a good representation of the population which is why they oftentimes do telephone surveys because almost everybody is telephone and and they they really see if they can try to get a good representation of the population from a telephone rather than all of the readers are of a particular magazine or a particular website or a particular news site or or whatever so that so i guess another reason why um surveys and polls don't include you know millions of people is because well people change their mind every every week every month every year and if you go to uh, gallup.com this is uh, probably the most famous uh, survey uh, company and it tracks the will of the people every day and, and shows how people change their mind every day um, so for example here's a poll percentage of Americans maybe North Korea is the greatest US enemy uh, and it, it it's it's low, and then all of a sudden for, in 2018 it shoots up to 51%. 2019 it drops all the way back down to 19%. And of course this is dependent on what's going on in foreign affairs at the time, what people are reading about in the news. And then um, we've got support of legalization of marijuana. That's a steady increase over over many many years. Um, and then you've got generational difference probably and then you've got let's see Americans perception of the income taxes they have to pay and we can see how that changes over time and so on and so forth right